He was 28 years old when he was named head coach of then Hartford Whalers. He was the youngest coach to hit the 1,000 game mark. And perhaps just as important, even more so, is that tomorrow night he will hit 1,500 NHL games coach. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause for Paul Maurice. What do you consider to be you know, integral characteristics to a good leader? I, I would say there's only one for me, and that's honesty. I want you to come in and look, at, look me right in the eye and tell me exactly what you think. I learned a lot of things from players that were good men that would kind of just throw a piece out. Tom Barrasso, <clears throat> crusty fella, one of my best friends now, but he played for me, and, and I was, it was early on. And now I'm nervous, right? Like I've. I've sat Paul Coffey out of a game once. He's got three Norris trophies, like five Stanley Cups. I got nothing, man. <laughs> but I, I didn't tell Tom Barrasso early enough in the day for him, for his schedule, that he wasn't <laughs> playing. And he came in my door. He said, listen, kid, the next best answer to yes is no. Just give me the answer as early as you can. So that kind of shaped me a little bit, because I was agonizing all day long about telling Tom Barrasso, he's got two Stanley Cups, a Vesna, a Calder, he's mean. <laughs> and I got to tell him he's not playing tonight. So that honesty thing, and then I would agonize about, about you know, I, I, I kind of knew the job I had to do, but I would agonize about bringing somebody into my office. And the trick that I came up with is, what do I want from the meeting? Which is simple to you people. You're going, oh my God, this guy's coaching our NHL team. <laughs> no, but force myself to come up with one line from that. What exactly specifically do I want from this meeting? What I want them to expect from me, what I want to deliver in front of the room is the truth. So my job is to find it in the game, to know what the truth is. We're doing this well, we're not doing well. This is the problem that we've got to fix. And then I want to make sure that I deliver the truth individually and, and on a daily basis. So you got to know your job. I didn't know my job. I, I had coached two years of major junior hockey, and I, and I was behind a bench of an NHL. The only thing I knew was I didn't belong there. I shouldn't be there. I wasn't good enough to be an assistant coach in the NHL. So then I got to learn my job, which has turned out to be a, you know, the fact that I survived it, one of the best things, because I had to learn the game, and I had to learn it hard. So I just watched more and more video than I think anybody else did. So the hockey part of it, I, I, I had some confidence by the end. So I could tell some truth about the game. No, if we do it this way, this way is better. So you learn some truths about the game, and that would be true of your professionalism, learning your job, so that you can go up and speak the truth easily. You've touched on it in some of your media answers or interviews is about the need to give or the benefit of giving everybody a purpose. How important has that been kind of in right. your teams to make sure that everybody feels as if they have some sort of role in getting the Winnipeg Jets or whichever right. team you're coaching at the time so the, the next step? The most important thing between a coach and a player is that we agree on what you're good at. I don't, I don't know if that translates to your line of work, but so if Sarah thinks she's a 50 goal scorer. And I, I think Sarah's a grinder, all right? She can, she's a real good defensive player. She blocks shots, she can drop the gloves, she can do those things. But Sarah thinks she should score. I'm never putting Sarah in a position to score 50 goals because I don't see her like that kind of player. I'm gonna put her on the third line. She's gonna play left wing with Adam Lowry. She's gonna finish all her checks. She's gonna kill penalties. And she's gonna sit on the bench all night going, I'm better than this. This is not what I'm good at. She'll never accept that role, and she will never, in my opinion, then reach the level that she can get to, because she doesn't believe in that path. She doesn't believe in that level. My job, then, is to individually, as each player, is to agree on what, what we think you're best at and put you in a position to be as good as you possibly can be, and then I gotta make the exact same decision about our team. What are we good at? Decide what we're good at, and then practice them and train them in a hour that allows us to be good at. You slow your team down when you give them too many things. Find out what you're good at, true of an individual or a group, and run hard with that. The two overarching rules for the Winnipeg Jets is we're gonna work our asses off and we're gonna enjoy the year. I wanna enjoy my life. I want my players to enjoy their life, their families, all of it. With an intense environment and a pressure-filled environment, I still wanna be able to come to work and enjoy my day. 
I didn't have that feeling when I was younger because I wasn't enjoying it. And I also I had nothing to relate to these guys with. Half my team was older. I didn't have any kids. I couldn't get what we were doing. Now I've kind of been through what they've all been through. Like my kids are older than some of them now. Honesty is the big, the big thing for you, and, and I want that clearly. I, I want you to it and certainly enjoy your life. We, we talked a lot about what you've learned over the years with dealing with players, but how about what you've learned dealing with management and dealing with your general manager? And what would you do differently if you put yourself, That's if you were one. back and you were 28? I don't get that one very often. That's a good one. Managing your manager is incredibly important. Being aware of the pitfalls they face based on the job or the comments that you make shorten your lifespan or extend your lifespan, absolutely. His job is different. My, we speak a different language, but it's my job to listen to him. When you're unemployed as an NHL, ex-NHL head coach, you're watching five teams play, and it's the five teams you think my guy might get fired. So I watched a lot of Winnipeg. Uh, and and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make light of it, because well, first of all, it's happened to me three times, so I've been there. But there are five or six teams that were going to change their coach unless something unusual happened, so I watched them play a lot. So I had a really good handle on the three or four things on ice that they could change kind of quickly. And then I had the advantage of being able to hold them accountable. So number one rule-ish of coaching is you cannot be afraid of your players. Like if you're right as the coach and you got a point, that point has to get made, and you've and you got to win that argument. 